Hello, in this video, we're going to talk about connective tissues. Connective tissue serves as the structural framework of the body, linking, separating, and providing support to other tissue types. It is unique among tissues because its cells are dispersed within an extracellular matrix, ECM, that is more loosely organized than in other tissues, such as the muscle or epithelial. The extracellular matrix consists of a fluid compartment that surrounds the cells. There are primarily two types of connective tissue, and each place will categorize these differently, but briefly speaking, the two are connective tissue proper and specialized connective tissue. Connective tissue proper is further classified into loose and dense connective tissue. Specialized connective tissue includes reticular, blood, bone, cartilage, and adipose tissues. Though perhaps less glamorous than muscle or neural tissue, connective tissue is vital for maintaining the unity and function of the body's various systems. So let's look at the components of what make up a connective tissue. Connective tissue comprises three key elements, the cells, ground substance, and fibers, all of which form the extracellular matrix. The cells itself, these are the fibroblasts, which are the main cells, and they're responsible for generating and sustaining the extracellular matrix. Other cell types found in this area include immune cells like macrophages, lymphocytes, and mast cells, and adipocytes, which are your fat cells. Specialized forms of connective tissue uh, have their own unique cells, such as chondrocytes in cartilage and osteocytes in bone. Now, ground substance, which is the other part of connective tissue, this is like a gel-like medium which facilitates hydration and nutrient diffusion. It contains water, proteoglycans, glycoproteins, and glycosaminoglycans. Now, the fiber is the other important part of the extracellular matrix together with the ground substance. The fibers are what is produced by the fibroblasts, the cells, the main cells in connective tissue. There are three fiber types, collagen, elastic, and reticular fibers, each contributing distinct properties to the tissue. Collagen is the most abundant, and it is tough. Elastic fibers allows for stretching and recoil, whereas reticular are quite strong and rigid as well. Now let's talk about the two types of connective tissue, beginning with connective tissue proper. Connective tissue proper includes loose connective tissue, also known as areola tissue. These basically wrap and cushion organs. These guys are the epitome of flexibility and softness. It's like the body's version of packing material, filling spaces with a soft matrix that holds everything in place while allowing for the exchange of nutrients and waste between the bloodstream and the cells. Its composition is a balanced mix of cells such as the fibroblasts and macrophages. All the three fibers are found and the ground substance, creating a loosely organized, flexible mesh that can withstand limited forces, but is primarily designed for cushioning and support. Examples of loose connective tissue include what we find in the lamina propria of the alimentary canal and the respiratory tract, the mucous membranes of the reproductive and urinary tracts, the glands, the mesentery, and the dermis of the skin. Next is dense connective tissue, which is again another type of connective tissue proper. Dense connective tissue, in stark contrast, dense connective tissue is the body's equivalent of reinforced concrete. It's tougher, more compact, and designed to handle stress and strain. It's comprised predominantly of collagen fibers, densely packed together, and this tissue type gives tendons and the ligaments their incredible tensile strength enabling them to withstand the rigorous demands of movement and support. The extracellular matrix is densely packed with collagen fibers. Based on the arrangement of the fibers, there are two subtypes of dense connective tissue. 
These are dense regular and dense irregular. Dense regular connective tissue has the collagen fibers aligned parallel to each other. This arrangement provides the tissue with high unidirectional resistance to stress. The best dense regular connective tissue example are your tendons and ligaments. Dense irregular connective tissue has collagen fibers randomly interwoven, forming a three-dimensional network resistant to distension in all directions. It is usually located in the capsules of joints and walls of organs. So those were the connective tissue proper. Let's look at the specialized connective tissue, beginning with reticular connective tissue. This type of connective tissue forms supportive framework of organs such as your lymph nodes, spleen, and bone marrow. It's characterized by a network of fibroblasts, specifically reticular sites, as well as reticular fibers. These are the specific type of fiber. Reticular connective tissue supports other cell types, specifically white blood cells, and that is why they are found predominantly in these organs and sites where we find a lot of white blood cells, such as your lymph nodes and your spleen. Next is adipose tissue, which is a specialized connective tissue. Essentially, it is body fat. It's specialized in storing energy in the form of lipids. Beyond energy storage, adipose tissue also provides insulation, protection, and serves as an endocrine organ, releasing hormones that regulate metabolism. There are two types of adipose tissue, white and brown adipose tissue. White adipose tissue is the most abundant, storing energy and cushioning organs, while brown Adipose tissue is rich in mitochondria and specializes in generating heat, playing a crucial role in thermoregulation, especially in infants. Reticular connective tissue and adipose connective tissue has also been classified as loose connective tissue, which is a part of connective tissue proper, but we've separated that into its own category. Then you have cartilage, which is also a connective tissue. But unlike other connective tissues, cartilage is avascular, meaning it lacks blood supply. And it relies on diffusion through the matrix to receive nutrients and remove wastes. This feature, combined with its unique extracellular matrix rich in water and specialized fibers, allows cartilage to absorb shock and reduce friction in joints. Cartilage comes in three main types. These are your highline cartilage, which is the most abundant. These are found in the ribs, nose, larynx, and trachea, as well as covering bones at joint surfaces. It provides sturdy yet flexible support. Elastic cartilage contains a high concentration of elastic fibers, giving it enhanced flexibility found in structures that require bending like the ear and the epiglottis. Then you have your fibrocartilage, the toughest type. It contains thick bundles of collagen fibers, the strong fibers. It is found in areas subjected to heavy pressure and stretch, such as the intervertebral discs, the meniscus of the knee, and the pubic symphysis. The bone is also a connective tissue. Bone tissue, or osseous tissue, forms the rigid structure of the skeleton. It's a dynamic living tissue that continuously remodels itself. Bones provide protection to vital organs, support the body, facilitate movement by anchoring muscles, and serves as a reservoir for minerals like calcium and phosphate. The extracellular matrix of bone is rich in collagen fibers and mineral salts, giving it strength and rigidity while allowing for slight flexibility. Bone cells include osteoblasts, osteocytes, and osteoclasts are involved in the formation, the maintenance, and resorption of bone tissue, showcasing the tissue's dynamic nature in growth and healing. The final type of specialized connective tissue is the blood. Blood is a fluid connective tissue, unlike any other. 
is tasked with the vital role of transportation within the body. It transports oxygen, nutrients, waste products, and various cells throughout the body playing a key role in immunity, regulation of pH, and temperature control. Blood is composed of a liquid matrix called plasma, in which red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets are suspended. This composition allows blood to perform a wide range of function, from delivery of oxygen to wound clotting and immune defense. So in summary, each type of connective tissue with its unique composition and arrangement of cells, fibers, and ground substance plays a crucial role in the body's structure and function highlighting the interconnectedness and complexity of bodily systems. We divided connective tissue into two broad types, connective tissue proper and specialized connective tissue, which include a whole lot, include bone, cartilage, blood, and even adipose tissue. Thank you for watching.